Hello. I would like to demonstrate mold design in Symmetron E version 12. The purpose of this video won't be so much just mold design, uh, but actually to show the ECO manager uh, some of the mold design specific tools that Symmetron offers uh, on a relatively simple part uh, that will show a lot of the functionality that Symmetron affords and uh, hopefully not a very long video. So let's start uh, by going into the mold design wizard and here we give it an assembly name I'm going to call this quick inserts And we're going to set the working directory. And we'll put it here under the ECO demo. And I'm going to change the layout part. So the layout part is just something uh, of a placeholder uh, to hold the parts. And I have my own modified uh, layout part that I like to use. Okay, so here we have the layout part. And I'm going to activate this just to explain what it is. The layout part often will contain a sketch. That sketch contains uh, three points, one on each end and a midpoint along with the rotation value. Uh, this rotation value is tied to the setup. I'll explain that in a second. The layout UCS is actually a special coordinate system attached to each one of those points. And uh, this is my layout part because I've added a third one here. Uh, and this allows for having a single cavity uh, on center. So you could have like a left hand part, a right hand part, or a single part in the center. And the layout UCS has a special attribute uh, that Symmetron recognizes as a placeholder UCS for the parts within the mold design. And so each one of these has a little uh, blue crosshair. And if I pick on that little crosshair, I could move these parts up or down independently, and you could give it a rotation. So I happen to know that the parts I'm going to bring in uh, would like to have a 270 degree rotation there, a 90 degree rotation there, and we'll do an inch up and an inch up. And this one I'm actually not using. I don't know if I can just close this out. Ah, so when I close it out, it goes back to the global uh, value over here. So if I enter values here, it affects whatever UCSs aren't called out independent by hitting that little blue cross. Uh, but I'm not using the center one anyway, so we'll call this good. Okay, and then when I want to add the parts, I'm going to activate the parting subassembly. And we're going to come over here and choose layout tools. And we're going to load work parts. So the master part that I'm going to use is uh, this part file here. I suppose it might be a little less confusing if I add another folder here. And let's call this folder parts. And we're going to take this part and also the engineering change part and we'll do a copy and paste into the parts folder okay so here's the part that we're building the mold to and here's an engineering change that we'll incorporate once we're done so we pick this one and we give it a shrink and by the way just to explain this a little better this first field here is for adding a virgin part we call it a master part. 
And if we've already went through the trouble of doing quick split on that part, we call that the work part. And we would actually be skipping the first field and, and basically picking the work file, as we call it, because that part has already been quick split. So since we haven't done quick split yet, we're using the first field and it's creating the second file for us automatically, which is called the work part. So here's the master that we don't really mess with too much. Here's the work file, which is our copy of the master that we can do whatever we want to. So this is your cover your ass file, and this is the work file that we're going to put draft on and uh, close up the internal shutoffs and everything like that. We're adding shrink, and we're going to uh, check these boxes. I don't know, know if we'll use a parting surface part, but purpose of this video is uh, kind of to explain a lot of this stuff so we're going to go ahead and take both of those and say okay we're going to pick one UCS here one UCS there and the rotations are what I wanted to get the little window facing the outside so again the rotation value is controlled in the layout part here we could change the work coordinate system if this were coming in upside down. Uh, the work coordinate system belongs to the file that's coming in. And really all that matters is that the Z positive is pointing towards the cavity side. If we want to rotate it, we can rotate it here in the layout part. Uh, the work coordinate system just is important that the Z positive is facing in the cavity direction of the part. Okay, so now let's just take a look at what we got. So here's the mold center, and normally uh, mold center would be the split between the core and cavity plate, the A and the B plate. So where this part sits, isn't terribly important as long as you're okay with uh, here's the mold party line and here's the part sitting up there so I'm okay with that orientation and uh, position so now I'm going to activate one of these guys let's go with this one and we'll hide that one and we're going to go into quick split Okay, so we're going to pick on a face that we know is going in the cavity direction. And we say start analysis. And this is a stop condition. So it's going out, picking neighboring faces, and stopping when it reaches this condition. So this condition could be a positive 1 degree. It could be 0, or it could be minus 1 degree. Uh, we have minus 0.1, which is a a uh, tenth of a degree of wraparound looking from that direction. We'll say OK. And then we'll flip the arrow. And now we're going to interrogate these faces from this pull vector. And we choose Start Analysis. And say OK. Now we're going to look at the draft angle analysis tool. So here we can see we've got one degree on that side, one degree on this side. Everything here looks good. Okay, and actually let's spread that apart and quick split. So there are some things that got missed here, and I'll show you why. We'll attach those here. So if we go back into that draft angle analysis, probably have to roll it over to see it. There's just a little bit of undercut here in that radius. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to live with that. Okay, so now we've got our groups. 
here on the parting tab you can see we've got the cavity group and the core group and the next thing that I want to do is unstitch these guys as a group and the reason that I do that is because I like to use close open gaps and we want to fill in uh, these openings the internal shutoffs and close open gaps requires that this is a sheet solid so now we do faces close open gaps pick all these guys we want new faces okay so all those are now closed up and let's flip sides alright and now uh, we're going to use extend planer and cones but prior to doing that I want to give myself a rectangle to work to so I'm going to choose add reference and pick this we go to the rectangle tool and I'm going to dimension this so let's say from here to here is 7 inches we'll call this 14 inches and we'll give this a length of 14 okay and then we're going to choose faces extend planar and cones and I want these faces to be picked okay and then we're going out to this uh, bounding box okay and now we're going to go into quick split and we're going to identify the parting attributes so we're saying that all this stuff is seal off oops all this stuff is seal off between this group and this group okay and then uh, what I didn't show yet actually I haven't brought them in okay so this is something uh, that's pretty cool I'm going to activate the movable side I'm going to grab an insert this is uh, an insert that I created myself we're going to choose add duplicate we're going to go to my catalog go to the inserts and we're going to take the mold core insert place on assembly UCS and let's bring it down okay that looks good now um, actually this insert sized on the way in uh, I guess you probably didn't get a chance to see it uh, but let me just verify that's the case yeah so the insert if we look at the setup table the X length of the insert is being driven by the bounding box data of the quick split groups and uh, rounded off by an increment of 1 8 so here the insert in the X is 19 and a quarter inches long and that's automatically sized according to the work part same thing with the Y the Y is a formula and so I was kind of hoping to show that but it just happened so automatically that uh, as soon as I brought that insert in it kind of jumped to the correct size uh, for the work parts that are there so let's also bring in the cavity 
again it's assembly add duplicate I go and get the mold cavity insert place on assembly UCS uh, we're going to want to flip this over 180 in the Y axis and bump it up in the Z go to the front view let's hide the core for a second Okay, that looks okay. Okay, so now we're going to hide the fixed side and do a cut active. Cut active is what we use to actually cut the uh, core block and the cavity block. And we want to pick one surface from each group. Uh, and that would be the core group okay so now if we hide the parting subassembly uh, we see the core insert being cut uh, by the work file and the work file knows core faces from cavity faces and it also knows parting surfaces because we assign those attributes okay so now I'll do the same thing to the cavity side we do cut active this is the plate we're cutting it wants us to pick the quick split groups that belong to the cavity. Uh, currently I've got those hidden. Let's turn those on. Okay, so we're looking for one blue face here, one blue face there, and then perform the cut. And then we turn off the parting group. We turn off the core, and we're left with the cavity. Okay, now we're going to activate the fixed side and we're going to do some uh, cool things. In fact, let's do this. Let's activate the mold cavity insert. And I want to use this curve uh, 2D bounding. This is actually uh, pretty cool. So it wants me to pick surfaces. So I pick these surfaces and I middle click. And it gives me a 2D bounding box around those faces. And okay. And there's a lot of things that we can do here, but um, I'm not going to go into it all. This is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do a small check. And I'm going to create a few more here. Uh, we really probably don't need these for each one, but as fast as it is, let's just do it. Okay, and then we're going to activate the fixed side and we're going to choose assembly extract by contour. And again, um, I probably don't need to pick all of these, but uh, I'm going to do it anyways. them all at once let's try it this might be a bad idea okay and the target assembly is the fixed side and we want to go through okay so these are the inserts that we're about to get Okay, so now if we hide the mold insert, uh, we see that we got all these 
individual inserts, and they're all uh, individual. Okay, so I, I guess it's it's good, but uh, in reality, we really only need two, and then we need them to be moved around, right? So I'm probably going to end up deleting two and three and four and six, seven, and eight. Uh, but let's go ahead and activate one of these guys, and uh, we're going to put a wedge on it. So here we're going to do uh, insert, add a wedge, we pick the floor, and then we pick box, uh, box, and local. Okay, so here we're about to add a little foot on it. I want the height to be 0.2 and the offset to be eighth of an inch and the radius to be 0.62. Okay, you see what we're getting here? We're getting a foot on there. And then here it's going to create a cutting object at the same time. clearance there. I'll put a thousandths in there, but you shouldn't need it. Okay, so we're going to get a cutting object. And that cut happened, and uh, for some reason it, it cut the insert itself, so we're going to delete that. Okay, so here's the foot. And then let's take a look at the mold cavity insert. Okay, and that actually gave me a pocket right here for the foot. Well, you can see right now it's one to one. I don't have any clearance here. So let's go back here and uh, activate that insert. We're going to do a toggle on the display. Here's my cutting object. And I'm going to do a solid extend object. And we're going to push this out. Uh, let's go 30 thousandths. Okay. And then let's show this. And I'm going to do a manual cut of this block with this guy. Okay. And then we're going to do a toggle again. Toggle back. Here's the insert. Okay, and then let's go to the fixed side and let's create a couple of planes. Datum plane, mid plane. We're going to bump this wall, bump this wall, bump this wall, and bump this wall. And I I think that's all we need. Okay, then we're going to delete. Oh, wait, sorry, we need to do one more wedge. Let's activate one of these guys. We'll take him. Do one more wedge here. Okay, that all looks good. That looks good. And do it. Delete this cut. Toggle the display. Solid extend object. Get that going in the right direction. And we'll do 30 thousandths. Okay. Take a peek at the bottom of our block. Cutting this one by that one. And then toggle the display again. Okay, and now we're ready to get rid of some things. Let's keep insert one and delete two, three, and four. Uh, delete. Bye bye. We're keeping no, 
number 7 and deleting 8 and deleting 6 and 5. Okay, bye bye. And now we can use the Well, let's rename this while we're there. And actually, uh, this is a good time to point out that this could be an issue. If I re try renaming this to insert to, it'll be a problem because we have an insert to, right? Uh, insert to exists in the folder I'm working in. Let's get back here to Symmetron Documents, Demos, ECO, Demo, and this folder. Okay, so here we need to get rid of two, three, four, five, six, and eight. These have to go. So that I can rename this one and call it number two. Okay, and now I can just go ahead and, and mirror those uh, using the assembly mirror. That would be here. So we're going to um, mirror this one across here with cut. And what's with cut going to do? It's going to cut that uh, pocket. Okay. There it is. And then we're going to do this one and this one against this mirror with cut. And by the way, this is going to mirror, uh, positionally mirror symmetrical parts. So the light blue uh, shows you that you're just getting a new position and not really mirror geometry. So it's actually interrogating the geometry to see if it really needs a mirror or if it can just be positionally mirrored. So we're going to go ahead and take that. Then we're doing this one. Same deal across here with cut. And then these two guys across here. Okay, and that should have given us all of our feet and uh, pockets and everything. That all looks good. Be a good time to save. Okay, and now we're going to do the ECO. And uh, wish me luck because I screw this up all the time. Okay, so over here on the assembly tree, we have an ECO manager. Uh, it shows a copy of the part, the original part. And we're going to come down here and pick on the ECO tree. That gives me another tab. And here, I'm going to do add comparison part. Well, the comparison part is the ECO. I think I put a folder in here, did I not? Yeah, parts. Okay, so here's the engineering part. And it wants me to select a reference part. And that means if I pick the work file, or I could probably pick this one too a bit. It's going to fall into place with the proper scale. So it's putting it in location with the appropriate scale factor all automatically. And then it wants me to select the previous modification. And I'm thinking that that means the work file. So let's get a few things off the screen here to make it easier. We're going to pick the work file. I don't think that was right. Uh, I don't think this is right, but let's hit the check mark and see what we get. Okay, so here. 
it's comparing the original part in the ECO and if we do an edit comparison okay we can see the changes so the red is the old geometry and the blue is the new geometry so what was a, a fillet is going to a sharp and over here we're getting a notch in the side of the part okay uh, so let's go ahead and say okay and then here we're going to choose replace faces or we can replace master um, let's try replace master and see what happens okay so now if we look at the work file yeah I think I did it wrong apparently the uh, what I'm expecting is to see those changes come into the work file. So let's try this again. So we'll delete this. And we'll delete this. Okay, so this JB cap is the. Ah, okay, so that's where my change went. Uh, I see what happened. So I pushed the change into my reference part file. Uh, and that's not what I wanted to do. So let's see if we can change this. Yeah, that's not, not what I was hoping for. Okay, but I think I can get there. So let's try this again. Okay, so here we're going to do add comparison part. We're going to take the engineering change. Okay. And the previous modification needs to be the work file. That's where I screwed up last time. So we pick here. And we pick here. Okay, good. And pick the reference part. Okay, it falls into place. Say OK. Alright, and then again we go here and we say replace master. Pick the work part. Okay, there we go, that looks better. Okay, so now here's the work file. And what's interesting is that this change updated and our fillets went away and the parting surfaces were maintained. Over here where I have a notch, something got lost and I got some uh, issues to address. But what's interesting is that we didn't get a failure of the cutting of our cavity insert or our core insert. And this is what's important about how the software works. It's kind of frozen these in time. Knowing that you'll have failures there, it puts them on hold and gives you a chance to address things. So this is going to be real simple to change. All we have to do is activate this work file. And we're going to go in a quick split, I assume. Yep, okay. And we're going to open this up. And we say that these guys 
belong to this group. And this one belongs to this group. And let's check the unstitch and make sure that it's right. Okay, yeah, we gotta include this in that unstitch. Alright, and then the extend planer and cones simply needs to have these spaces added. Back to quick split, and we say that these surfaces are like those. And I think that's it. Now, when we come back here, we can show the core, and all we should have to do is update and disassociate. And just like that, our core is updated. And same thing with the cavity. Update and disassociate. And let's see if our uh, inserts remain intact. So we'll turn off parting group. Turn off the core. See what we got here. Ah, so we're over here actually. Yep, so all of our inserts are okay. None of that got messed up. Still got all of our pockets. <clears throat> and we would just have to do something over here to get rid of these guys and replace them with those. Uh, so that's good enough. I wanted the video to be short, but you can see how uh, the engineering change manager works well to uh, allow you to make changes while freezing time uh, to address those changes. And uh, it works really nice. Thanks for watching.